1. Multiple orange lights seen over Berlin, Vermont. On November the 20th, 2013, I was driving home from work, heading south on the I-89. I had just come to the top of the big hill, and was passing the Berlin exit on my right. When I looked to my left, and out over the city of Berlin, I saw what looked like up to seven large, bright orange lights. I watched for a few seconds as the lights stayed stationary in an odd, slightly uniform geometric shape, maybe something that would resemble the corners of an octagon, or possibly a six-sided star. Then a few of the lights faded out, except three that stayed in a large, triangular shape for maybe another second or two, then they faded out as well. The size of the formation was maybe the size of one's fist, i.e., if you held out your fist, it would roughly cover the array of lights. I reached for my phone to turn on the camera and tried to get a picture, but they were gone by then. The sighting lasted possibly five to seven seconds. The skies were perfectly clear and bright, with no clouds and no limit to one's visual range. I would say that the direction I was looking in was south, possibly southwest. As I continued driving, I tried to rationalise what it was, and the best I could come up with was that maybe it was a meteor burning up or something in space. However, at approximately 5.05pm EST, I arrived at the Williamstown exit and exited right off of I-89 south and turned left towards Williamstown VT. I was shocked when I looked up and the lights were back in the same direction as before, roughly in the same spot of the sky. This time the lights were in a sort of crescent moon line, not a straight line, with the arc opening upwards towards the sky. I quickly turned into a driveway and hopped out with my camera, however when my camera came on the lights faded out again. This time there were four lights and they faded out at once, as far as I could tell, and there was a small light blinking at roughly where they were. I arrived home at roughly 5.20, and it was dark at this time. I stayed outside looking for as long as I could, and noticed that there were two jets very high in the sky that were making huge circles overhead. I could literally watch them make a circle, which took up about as much of the sky as I could see from my home. They remained in the sky for as long as I stayed outside. 2. National UFO Reporting Centre Case Brief, La Crosse, WA December 29th, 1994 At approximately 21.45 hours on Thursday night, December 29th, 1994, a mother with her six children was driving north on the Zering Cutoff Road in southeastern Washington state, just five miles north of the Snake River. Several of her children suddenly started shouting and called the mother's attention to three extraordinarily bright lights above a recently harvested wheat field off to the right east side of the road. At first, they thought the lights were the landing lights of an airliner at low altitude, perhaps making a forced landing in the field and flying directly towards them. Then one of the older children suggested the lights were the headlights of a truck, but they immediately realised that description didn't fit it either. Suddenly, the family began to see the objects that were attached to the three lights, and they were awed by the vision. They saw three coal-black, delta-shaped craft, with articulating structures on their noses, from which the blinding lights were radiating. They appeared to be scanning the ground ahead of them. The objects, apparently locked in tight, unwavering formations, slowly drifted across the road at very low speed, slowly turned left, and proceeded south parallel to the road the family was on. The mother reported that the objects were right above their car, giving off a barely perceptible humming sound, like an electric refrigerator, and they were close enough that a person with a good throwing arm could have hit them with a rock. When I talked with her on January the 1st, 1995, she was still seemingly upset by the experience. She volunteered that she was frightened to either drive or go outside after dark, which is not uncommon among people who have had recent UFO experiences. 3. National UFO Reporting Centre Case Brief, January the 5th, 2000 on Wednesday, January the 5th, 2000, the National UFO Reporting Centre received two telephone messages at 3.16 and 3.51 hours Pacific Standard Time from Officer Thomas Ed Barton, employed by the Lebanon, Illinois Police Department. The messages apprised our centre that a UFO sighting had occurred in St. Clair County, Illinois, and in surrounding areas, 
at approximately ten past four central earlier that morning. Later the same morning, we were able to talk to Officer Barton, who reported to us the following. At approximately ten past four central time on that morning, he overheard an announcement by the St. Clair Emergency Dispatch Operator that a citizen had entered the Highland, Illinois police station and requested that an officer go outside and view a very peculiar object that was hovering nearby in the sky. The citizen had witnessed the bizarre-looking object on his way to work, and he apparently refused to leave the station until a police officer had viewed the object with him. Having heard the announcement about the incident over his radio, Officer Barton looked to the southeast from his location in Lebanon and noticed two extremely bright white lights suspended in the sky, close to the horizon. The two lights were radiating so much light that the spectacle reminded Officer Barton of the Japanese rising sun symbol used on the Japanese battle flag. A very short period of time later, the two large lights appeared to merge into one, and the illumination the object was radiating appeared to increase dramatically. Officer Barton began driving south and east in an attempt to approach the object. He turned his overhead flashers on, and at times was driving at 75 to 80 miles per hour towards the object, which was still generally to the southeast of his position. After a short period of time, Officer Barton realised that the object appeared to be travelling toward him. He stopped his vehicle, extinguished his overhead flashers, and rolled down the window on the passenger side of his vehicle. The object approached his location and passed overhead at an estimated altitude of 1,000 to 1,500 feet, and within an estimated 100 feet lateral distance of his position on the ground. It was headed generally to the west or northwest at this time. The object was distinctly triangular in shape, with three white lights on each corner of the triangle, and it exhibited a galaxy of peculiar lights on its aft end, including white, hues of red or pink, and perhaps other colours as well. After passing over Officer Barton, the object suddenly turned to its left, without either banking or yawing, suddenly accelerating quite dramatically, and seeming to streak to the west, covering approximately eight miles, the officer estimated, in approximately three seconds. Note, Officer Barton, in multiple telephone conversations with our organisation, and during at least one radio broadcast, has emphasised how almost unbelievably quickly the object accelerated, and moved a considerable distance to the southwest in just a few seconds. Its velocity was almost unimaginable, he reports. This is one aspect of the case that strongly suggests to us that the object was almost certainly not of human manufacture. He radioed St. Clair County Emergency Dispatch, apprising them that he had the object in sight, and advising them as to the direction it had moved, generally to the southwest. He recommended that dispatch contact units to the south and west of his position to have the officers there attempt to spot the object from their vantage points. Apparently at least one officer witnessed the object next, and two other officers, who have not come forward and who do not wish to be identified, witnessed the object while they were standing in the cemetery of their town as well. An officer from the Milstadt Police Department, Officer Craig Stevens, with whom we also spoke, overheard the broadcast and moved his cruiser to a dark part of that town to see if he could spot the object in the night sky. He quickly spotted it to the west of his location, at approximately 45 degrees above the horizontal plane, and gauged its size as huge. He estimated that it was one or two stories tall, and perhaps three stories long. It had several very bright lights on it. St. Clair Dispatch requested that someone, if possible, attempt to get a photograph of the object. In response to that request, Officer Stevens removed a camera stored in the trunk of his cruiser and quickly photographed the object. However, because the outside temperature was low, approximately 18 to 20 degrees Fahrenheit, neither the camera nor the film functioned well, so the resolution of the photograph is inadequate. After Officer Stevens had taken the photograph, the object appeared to move further to the west, moving towards Dupo, Illinois, Cahokia, Illinois, and San Luis. A Dupo police officer may have witnessed the object at the time. In the final analysis, the police departments and communities involved in the incident included the following. Highland, Summerfield, Lebanon, Shiloh, Muscatar, Milstadt, Dupo, and Cahokia, Illinois. The object was observed by officers from at least the following communities in chronological sequence. Lebanon, Shiloh, Milstadt, Dupo, and Cahokia. Notes and addenda. At one point during the sighting, we estimate, the object was within two to three statute miles of Scott Air Force Base. However, an official spokesman for that base reportedly made an official statement to that effect, that A, their tower was closed for approximately one hour during the time of the sighting, 
B. Their base radar had been turned off for unspecified reasons during the same hour, and C. None of their personnel were aware of the sighting, and none had seen the object. We have received several unconfirmed reports that shortly after the incident, several of the police departments involved in the sighting, and several of the actual eyewitnesses to the incident, received visits from two or more individuals who are active employees from the federal government. They requested that the parties involved in the incident curtail all their statements to the press. We are unable to confirm these reports at the time this summary statement is being prepared. 4. Air Traffic Controller receives a report from airline pilot of UFOs. I am an air traffic controller for Minneapolis Center. This evening at 1900 hours, the pilot of an air carrier that was under my control reported two flights of two aircraft. There were no other aircraft in the vicinity at the time. He said they were about 15 miles in front of him at 35,000 feet, travelling away from him in a westerly direction. The UFOs stayed out in front of his aircraft carrier for approximately 15 minutes, until the pilot said that the UFOs were so far out in front of him that he could hardly see them anymore. After being relieved of my duties, I reported it to my supervisor, who put me in contact with the military air defence. The person at the other end of the phone said that they saw no objects in the area of this aircraft. The case has been forwarded to the National Aviation Reporting Centre on Anomalous Phenomenon. Executive Director Mr. Ted Rowe and Chief Scientist Dr. Richard Haynes, PhD, former Senior Research Assistant at NASA's Ames Research Centre in San Jose, California. The case is under active investigation, and audio and radar data will be requested from the FAA with the Freedom of Information Act request. 5. This sighting occurred on the 12th of the 9th, 2013, at approximately 9pm. Bright orange flashes lasting only a few seconds in North Pole, Alaska. At approximately 9pm this evening, my fiancé and I were relaxing on the couch watching television. The lights in the house were off. When we watch for television, we are facing one small and one large picture window that looks out onto our wooded yard. Our house is tucked into a forested lot, so that even the headlights from the very occasional passing car going to and from a neighbour's house is not seen from our living room. There are also very few houses on our road. As we watched our show, at least three bright orange flashes of light flew from the right side of our house in the air and moved across to the left. Even though it only lasted a few seconds, it was clear that the light originated and continued in the air, though maybe not treetop height. The trees around our property average about 20 to 30 feet high, From where the flashes originated, there is nothing but wooded property and our garage. The flashes seemed to be no more than 6 to 10 feet off the ground, but grew in height. My fiancé thought something in the garage had exploded. However, there was never any sound at all. I thought that perhaps the lights of a truck had flashed a few times. My fiancé ran out onto our front deck to look and see what it was, but there was nothing there. Nothing was out of place. The lights were bright orange, unclear quick flashes with three to five of them successfully within the span of three to five seconds. They moved from right to left completely silently, and were so bright that they lit up our front yard, which is about the size of the parking lot of a small business, and all the trees in our yard. To give you an idea of how big our yard is, we could probably park 30 to 40 cars in our front yard alone. I don't know if it's related or not, but last night, the night before this happened, at around 3.30 in the morning, Our dog, who sleeps on her bed in the living room, came into our bedroom and alerted to something in the living room or at the front door. This is out of character for her. Just as she woke me, I heard a very slight sound that I could not pinpoint. It seemed to resonate throughout the house. It was a very slight but deep sound. I could feel this sound just as much as I could hear it, and I can't explain it better than that. It lasted for just as long as it took me to walk the few feet from our bedroom to the living room, Then it was just gone. It just immediately stopped. I had a really tough time falling asleep that night. The dog acted as if there was someone at the door, and I felt like there was too, while our motion sensor lights weren't on, and I saw no one. I felt the weird need to sleep in my four-year-old's bed with him at that point. At this point, my healthy old dog would not leave my side. Suddenly, my dog collapsed onto the floor, and laid there with her eyes open, but not blinking. She would not respond to my voice or my touch. She would not even respond to my commands. This scared me. 
About two or three minutes later, she came to again and acted totally normal. It seemed as if she had been drugged, but of course she had not. I am college educated and hold a degree. I do believe that we are not the only intelligent life out there. However, like most people, I have never encountered anything personally that would give me that absolute, undeniable truth. I'm not going to say that this experience is that undeniable truth either. To be honest, I don't, and I can't know what this was that we saw, but it is a very strange experience, and it happened just as I have told you. Note, we spoke via telephone with this witness, and she is a very capable and serious-minded person. We suspect that she is an excellent and highly reliable witness. And the stories end there. Credit for all of these stories come from the National UFO Reporting Centre. Their website will be put in the description and contain real reports of UFO activity. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed the content, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment below about any strange phenomena you might have seen in the night sky. Until next time, and remember, in the depths of space, there's always another story to be told.